we're in the championship. It's our third season, and uh, very excited for it. Go to the Prem this season. I freaking believe, yeah, well, look at this. Three points from eighth to first after seven matches. That is cool, isn't it? But that's not what we start with. We start with League Cup third round. We've got Blackburn, and we just beat at home 2-0 in the league. We've got an opportunity to play them at home again, which is just funny how that works out. My team's not built to be able to handle nine players on the bench. I'm not lying. We need the mullet bullet. Oh, let's do it. Tommy Smith. He's the one guy we love down here. I've got, I've literally got nobody else to put on this bench. They're all recovering from injury or just not fit. Tom Smith is on the bench today. Let's do this. Go out there and enjoy yourselves tonight, lads. Third round of the League Cup. The dream is a Tom Smith penalty in the Prem. I mean, I could definitely see him like making the bench for a League Cup final or something when we're very good. I'm stunned those guys haven't left the team. Very pretty. Very pretty. This is this is functional. Bancroft. Bancroft. Carew. Oh, good ball! Oh, how did that not go in? Uh, blocked away, I guess. Might want to go with Vilgearson if we get nothing. Going to the second half. Oh, this is open. This is very open. All right, Quickie. Oh, didn't see that. E. That's better. Use that space a little more. Get behind their, their their forwards are dropping really deep. Oh, nice ball by Oko. It's what he does, and we've missed it again. I know nothing but pain and suffering. <laughs> Crossfield from Yusuf. Normally don't win those, but we won at that time. Oh my goodness, Bancroft, McGurk. Why, like, you go for goal with that? Oh, he's got four defenders. Okay. It's actually quite a lovely run. Gala. Oh, Gala! All of that sustained pressure. We finally bring one home. It's Burak Inchit. Carew. Ooh. Milicevic. Eh. Oh, have it. Goal! Oh, we rest. Call the dogs off. It's 2-0. League Cup fourth round in our sights. Consecutive 2-0 wins over Blackburn Rovers is nice. Oh, we demand the mullet. True. Got to get him on the field, don't we? Uh, we'll just put him in for Antonio Gallo. Because uh, why not? Oh my goodness, it's Tom Smith. <gasps> Completed pass by Tom Smith. Wow, a lot of composure there. Very clearly offside. It's a violation of rule seven, section three, sub clause two. Player must not be offside. Good win. Nothing again from Terrell Bancroft. Bit of an issue developing, but we continue to uh, acquire good results. So life is good. Did we win against Blackburn? Twice. We beat him both times. Two nothing, both times. Ah, the FA Cup kicking off. Well, a lot of a lot of stuff going on. Please give me another championship team. You haven't given me an easy round, but at least give me like a championship team. Okay. The round of 16, our second time in it in League Cup. We played Liverpool last time. There is Bristol, Hull, Charlton and Middlesbrough. Oh, there's a League 1 team. Oh, I want Stockport County so bad. Hold on. Stop the draw. Stockport County is in. Though I would take Hull, but they just got Arsenal, so they're uh, up a creek without a paddle. Come on. Swansea, Watford, and Bristol City are still available. Uh, well, it's Bristol City. <laughs> Come on, get in. That could get us to the quarterfinals of the whole thing. That's pretty crazy. That would be the farthest we've ever gone. All we have to do is beat Bristol City, and then we'd be one of eight teams left. This is like the decision I have to make every time is do I want Oko or do I want Whitaker? And I think we're going to stick with Whitaker for this game. So we know how to play against the 4-4-2 now, at least 
the 4-4-2s we've come up against so far. We lower the tempo a little bit. We make sure that we play out from the back with patience. <sighs> so we did already dub, we built an entirely new stadium, new site, uh, Taunton Stadium. It's 10,798, which is more than double the size of our previous stadium, Wordsworth Drive. And it, we, it, the stadium we have now is still the smallest in the championship, which is kind of funny. Rather a full, smaller stadium, in my opinion. I mean, we'd love to have a giant domineering stadium at some point in this save, but uh, yeah, we gotta get to the prem and have significant commercial success to be able to do that. I imagine once we get promoted, they'll plan a stadium expansion without my involvement. Stadium does have a lot of, yeah, I hope that the site they picked has plenty of room for expansion. Because that's always really hard to tell. You can't just tell, like, looking at the stadium here. What a pass, Di Benedetto! To Goodman, to fly and focus! Anton <laughs> strikes! This four-forward rotation that we have is going to work. Valgirsen against the 4-4-2 is great. Because he's able to drop in, good passer, large dude. He's not like a bad goal getter either, clearly. And he didn't even have to win that one. Oh, come on. All the great things I just said. Oh, inch it. Badak, pass it. Pass it. We look great. Let's put this on ice. Oh, that was a. Oh! Oh, that was so good. What a header by Luis Monunga. He just redirected the pace. Bedok Inja with a brilliant ball, hard, low, driven ball, and he just glances it over the keeper. That is a fantastic header by Luis Madunga. Well done in controlling possession. That's exactly what we want. And we've taken our uh, opportunities. We've also not taken all of them, but we have taken some of them. Oh no, my, my headphones are losing battery. Nothing crazy happened, please. Oh, I don't have any nails. Incha. Good pass. Oh, that was so good. Oh, he should. Oh. Jazee's hairline is strong as Chelsea's is as strong as Chelsea's squad balance. Can't wait for that FFP conversation about my hairline specifically. But I get you. Oh. Oh, Bancroft. Nice first touch. Nice second touch. That was so pretty. Oh, it's a shame that was blocked. And that looks like a big fat Zealand dub right here. Let's go boys. Let's go boys. Good win. Go team. Job not done. Just getting started. So it's us, Bridford, Sunderland, Brighton, Crystal Palace hanging out up here. Where do you think Jose Mourinho is going to end up? He's not going to stay at Roma. He's got one year left in his contract, so his compensation to leave is low. Problem is he's already coached Tottenham and Chelsea. I just don't know where he's going to go. I don't think he'll stay there. Porto? I don't know. Re oh, wait a second. Mourinho returns to Real Madrid after Ancelotti goes to Brazil. Oh, I hadn't put that one together yet. Ooh, that is, that is steamy. Mourinho at PSG would be spicy. It would. I just don't know if, like, the owners of PSG would do it. Conte to PSG feels better to me. Okay, here we go. People want to know what happened to Chelsea. Read the Athletic article about it. The Athletic is so freaking good. Reckon Nagelsmann will get rid of any of the new signings. Should he become CFC manager? No, I think he'll just, like, sweep out um, Callum, Pulisic, uh, just the riffraff on the team. Does Eli just call Pulisic riffraff? No, I mean, look, Chelsea has signed so many players that there are just a lot of redundant players on that team. I have been baffled by their transfer strategy for so long. If you sign a player like Christian Pulisic, if you sign a player like Mikalo Mudrik, you sign a player like Hakim Ziyech, you need to just give them a prolonged run in the team. And they're either going to work or they don't. But you'll never know right is if you have this massive rotation in this all this perpetual question of like who's starting this game who's starting this game who's starting this game and now everybody's just nervous and not you know doing well good save there's a reason that psg is not the best team in the world that manchester united is not the best team in the world because just your raw power and ability to sign players 
is not what makes you a great team. It is what Man City has done in the last seven or eight years where you sign guys and you give them room to breathe. And they're like, oh, this is how good we could be. That was a nice goal, by the way. Very good ball up to Bancroft. Very straightforward play for Bancroft, but still nice for him to get an assist. And Keon Edwards. Everybody loves Keon Edwards. Like, yeah, drop the line off. Ooh, Keon doesn't even realize he's getting to that ball. Ref! Oh, goalkeeper out of position. Easy finish for Sean McGurk, and it's 2 0. I do like how in football manager in recent years, those types of plays are possible, where it's just like organically the goalkeeper, not, a, not the goalkeeper's fault, is out of position because of where the play was. It's a very realistic looking goal. Oh, Brock, the pass was there. You get it to your left foot, and then you just freaking swing it towards Keon. Bancroft, what a touch. What a touch. What a pass. Was he on? Oh, that was nasty. Ooh. Bancroft, he didn't make this easy on Badak. Wow, that is exceptional playmaking from Badak Incha. Mason Mountroll, attacking midfielder. That's how I used him in FM. I've had him on my team before. God, we're killing this team. We are walking all over Portsmouth right now. De Benedetto, just a passing drill into the bottom corner. Portsmouth's got no idea what hit him. 4 0 at halftime away. We're playing easy, breezy, and beautiful ball. Well, this is going to pad the goal difference. Hey, hey, hey. Not right when I say that. No. De Benedetto and Barak Inch is so nice. That's a legit mid-table Premier League midfield that I think we have. Guys are very, very talented. Oh, that's great space for Solhoe. Just hit a pass. Oh, wow. What a header by Keon. Bancroft. Bancroft. Okay, <laughs> that was a great header by Edwards. Bancroft, this is so dangerous. His control and his pace in that position, and then Budak inches just first to the bouncing ball, stabs it on goal, it goes in, it's 5-0 in 48 minutes. Destroyed the best, the best South Coast club. They actually just got promoted up to the championship. They twin not up here before. Wow. They even got a corner kick goal with Zakinia. Sometimes it is just really going your way. We're not winning because, you know, we're countering or being too direct. We're winning because we're better, which is fine when you're on such a small budget. Oh, Pradrag Milosevic. <laughs> that was new boys. That was all new boys. That was Verbancic. To Predrag Milicevic. That's Croatian to Serbian right there. We are mending fences. I'm sorry we couldn't deliver eight, but a 7 0 away win in the championship. That is preposterous. All right, Brentford. Come hither, Brentford. Come hither. Yeah, we're playing it friendly. Just doing that instead of match practice during the international break. Figured it was fine. We're only missing a couple guys. And we have some injuries. We're trying to bring players back from their match sharpness woes. Oh, this is huge. Val Gerson now plays with his back to goal. That should keep him from turning and being stupid as much as he was being the last time he played. There, this is an idiot-proof trait for you. Please enjoy. I have trained... I've trained an idiot-proof trait onto you. You will now not turn around and lose the ball constantly. Please use with caution. Well, things have just escalated. Hmm. Let's see. The board have placed a... Hmm. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Welcome to Zealand News. The Totten Town board today have placed an excruciating transfer embargo on the club itself. These restrictions will remain in place until the outcome of any takeover has been resolved. The next page on our incredibly tiny production screen says Consortium targets Taunton takeover. Takeover rumors at Taunton Stadium gathered fresh momentum this week 
with the Skybet Championship Club, taught in town the subject of a $19.25 million takeover bid, according to The Athletic, and they never lie. The High Wickham based consortium, led by business tycoon Nick Garner, is reported to have stated that it intends to invest upwards of $4.4 million into the club. That's all for Zealand News. Taunton Town Takeover Talks. We'll be back tomorrow with more reporting from somebody that's not me sitting at this desk. Thank you for your attention. Well, that was nice of Zealand News to give us an update there. Yeah, $4.4 million from old Nick Garner. That'd be fun, though. Keon Edwards quite literally can't stop scoring for Trinidad and Tobago. He scored two more goals and has 12 goals in 10 caps. But we do actually need uh, a deeper playmaker. So I'm going to start Ferdinand Oko. The unkillable Ferdinand Oko back at it again. What are they playing? 4 3 3. All right, we have some license to really go after him today. Let's start a Guru. Let's have a uh, full. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have Keon Edwards. I'm actually going to bring up Fulgerson as well. They're not going to keep him off the field tonight. And you, he, he sounds like he's about to have a stroke. Oh, nice pass. Get in. <laughs> and that Auburn play is always in there. And they use Auburn's local radio commentary. And it's just fantastic. Oh, he's got a, he's got space. How do you mess that up? I, what even happened? Oh, this game just put it away, McGurk. I mean, their fullback is late to the recovery. McGurk's on the inside of him the whole freaking time. Uh, reverse it. I'd be like, oh. Oh, he saved it. Oh, my goodness. I, 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 one that's on my fairly regular rotation is the biggest rugby tackles of all time. That's a fabulous one if you ever get the chance. It's, it's cut to here comes the boom, and, I mean, that's all you really need to know. They're hanging around in this game, though. I thought once we got those two chances early, we would just blow them away, but this is a don't get complacent sitch. The Dennis Bergkamp call is great, too. You don't have to have excellent prose and poetry to have a great call. Oh, my goodness. What was this defensive line that we just laid down? Oh, that is brutal. I can't say it wasn't coming, though. I mean, they were definitely like, putting like putting pressure on us. That looked really simple, and we just looked really horribly out of position. Like, there is not a lot complicated about this play. That is a lofted ball over the top to a to their left wing. Just bad from us. Let's go win the game, though. These are real taunt hours. Aguru, Gala, Manunga. Let's go! Oh, I mean, that was such a nerve-wracking couple of seconds that we weren't, um, you yeah, know, we weren't the better team. And uh, let's let's be awake. We don't have a great defensive lineup out there, but let's go. Louise Manunga, taunting time is real. We can get after the end of games. Great ball by uh, Antonio Gala. And then we leave, uh, we put a center back up there so we can chase crosses off our short throw. And he put the ball away with ease there. Seven unbeaten. Big win away to Peterborough. And now we're at home against Norwich, who were like odds on favorite to win the league, I thought. My favorite free kick of all time. I don't really like Ronaldo. Never have, just I, I don't feel like he's a likable person. And that's very like anti, you know, non alpha of me, obviously. But he's an unbelievable player. And my favorite free kick of all time might have been where in the midst of all of the Ronaldo memes about not being able to score free kicks. He steps up to a free kick at the World Cup in the Iberian Derby and scores it in the 89th minute. That was insane. He doesn't get enough. I, I mean, he gets a ridiculous amount of credit for a lot of things, deservedly so, I'd suppose. But like, he doesn't get enough credit for that specifically, in my mind. That was unbelievable. And it, there's a, there isn't a bigger spot. I'm sorry. If you're like the superstar for Portugal, you're playing Spain at the World Cup and you're down a goal with a minute to go. But of course, yeah, my issue with... The Roberto Carlos goal is it was a friendly, right? And I feel like what creates my favorite free kicks would be the moment. All right, what are they playing? A full two, three, one, my good man. Perfect. Well, let's try Leon Shawama and Keon Edwards. I mean, I got to watch Lionel Messi score a ridiculous free kick against the United States. That was 
I went like not at the game, but I was watching because it was the Copa America semifinals. We had somehow backdoored our way into it. And we're playing Messi in Argentina and he scores just a preposterous free kick. And you're like, well, Brad Guzan is not getting to that one. Let's do this. Keep the pressure off the team. Us at home against Norwich. Norwich just got relegated from the Prem. They were like odds on favorite to go back up and have been a yo-yo club this entire save. Keon was making the run to the middle. Bancroft found a secondary run with Verbancic. Back to Bancroft. He's feeling it. Oh, yes! Terrell Bancroft! His first goal! Baloney from Chelsea! And it had been coming for him. Oh, that's lovely. Nice, Dyson. Koike somehow already back in his position. The guy's having a really good start to the year. Nice, Oko. For Bonchich. McGurk. What a first touch by Sean McGurk! Oh, oh this team is flying! Sean, the reports of Sean McGurk's demise greatly exaggerated. What a touch. And what a tidy finish inside of the post to them. Oh, good turn. Oh, wow. Weren't we uh, just cut the angle off? Good. Guy didn't take a great first touch. The stops play a bad trait. Not if you play a certain way. So if you play a really quick counterattacking team, that player... I mean, you can put them in your side, and you'll see how often they do that and how often they'll be able to play quickly, but they will stop it and slow the play down sometimes when they feel like that's what they need to do. Is that, like, the Elanga? Also, this is a classic FM defensive thing where we just never actually took the angle away. Like, what is that from Dyson? Like, just freaking go, man. And he, like, turns away from him. And then we've got, surprise, tall guys. Oh, Bancroft, that's a shame. Oh, for Bocic, how? Oh, he nearly, like, phased through that guy and scored. That whole play was a disaster. Why is this on? I literally turned that off twice. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do that. They have a deep lying forward who's bad. I don't want to give him the time of day. We were one play late on that. Literally one play late. All that space is open because we have two guys following their deep lying forward who ends up scoring that goal deep. That's why they freaking scored it. We have not exactly been capturing hearts and minds in the second half. I've had a good second half. They've created a couple of big chances. Oh, hit that dime. Look for Chawoma. Chawoma's huge. Let's go, baby. Come on. Come on. Quakey. Oh, what? Oh, so stupid. Quakey, why? I just wanted to go home like two and a half minutes early, but now he's out for the next three games. Ali Koike's going to get hit with his three-game suspension, and we're just going to have to live with it. Training facilities upgraded. Nice, nice, nice. They are now good. I don't want to alarm anybody, but our training facilities are now good. This is a big match, big early season match. 11 matches in. We're tied on points right now, dueling it out for that second position. We get him at Taunton Stadium on the spin. <sighs> Big ol' match. Taunton Town against Crystal Palace. 11 matches in. We're tied on points for second. Other oh, goalkeepers, Vanya Milinkovic Savic. Fair. It'll be fine. I just hate their dude. Their Nani U rules are so annoying. It's like math and stuff. Ridiculous. Asking me to do math. 
Whoa, guys. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, that's an unfortunate way to start a game. I mean, it's just terrible defense. This is pretty classic. Like, whoa, okay. Just cooked there. And then that shot was so bad. All right. Get him back immediately. Come on. I hit the immediate encourage shout. Oh, and it worked for Felgerson. I mean, that would have been an unbelievable individual effort by the Icelandic big man. I love Samuel A.D. Benedetto. Oh, make the pass. Oh, Valgierson. Oh, that first touch. Oh, but he scored it anyways! He made it so much harder than he needed to. Oh, what a goal by Amari Forsen. Great ball by Valgierson. What is that touch? And then he's like, all right, I'll show my quality. Little twirl and smack. Just leathers it. I really did stop, spin, hit far post, and it all went perfectly. Oh, oh, it's still alive. No, it's not. That was way farther wide than I thought. That is very bad, but we're getting where we need to get. We'll be okay in this game. We've really outplayed him. You just knew where that was going. If it's a, dude, if it's a left back in that situation with no opportunity to get out and cover, he's going to head it right to their wing. That is a, uh, you've been unlucky so far. You just need to play a little better. Come on now. Just need to play a little better. That oh, would have been unbelievable. He is great. Oh, McGurk. Good, Samuel A. Barack, thank you. 2-2. Two -two. That'll get him going. That'll get him going. Thank you, Samuel A. De Benedetto. He fights through his anxiety, wins the ball, gets it to Incha, who's an extra man. And it's a smashing finish. Somebody's going to score late, I bet, on a draw. And I'm counting on us. I'm counting on those real taunting hours. And yet, Carew. Uh, <laughs> All right. Thank you. That was absolutely astounding recovery defense by Luis Menunga. I have no idea how he got there and made him turn off that, but he did. Shoot. Well, it's a tough game, man. I thought we were the better team for longer stretches, but that's really tough. If you insist, I mean, it's a really low percentage shot. He just absolutely nailed it. That's a, it's a tough one to, to lose. Yeah, like, that's just classic of it. It's like most important match of the season. Own goal, mistake to tap in, tough. Bitter pill to swallow. Ends a really nice long unbeaten run. All right, Crystal Palace is catchable. They literally went and lost their next game. They played against Brentford, who's created some serious separation at the top. So let's go catch them. Well, I mean, whenever we play our next league game. This is League Cup round of 16 against Bristol City. Oh, it's away to Sunderland. This is a tough stretch of the year. Without everybody. No, this is the league game. I know we only play championship teams in the League Cup, but now that's turning into a good thing. This is League Cup round of 16, Bristol City and Taunton Town. <laughs> Let's go, lads. We have had a fun run. We beat Wolves in the second round of the League Cup, and we have beat two championship opponents, Blackburn Rovers, and I don't remember our first round match. They've all been tight. Blackburn Rovers, we controlled the game onto a 2-0 win. Nice turn. Gallo. Oh, it worked! But I get you! Sad noises. Great recovery off that left side. And now all of a sudden they're wide open. McGurk. Iris, he tried to cut off the defender with that touch, but Sands was able to. Oh, McGurk, yes, Barak, great pass to Leon Chawoma! And he 
He's off the mark for Tottenham. That was a lovely finish by Leon Chawoma. That is so well done by Badak Incha. He got it down to his foot quick. Fullback kept him on. Outside of the foot, beats the goalkeeper to it. And Badak Incha, so good. Seems better this year than he was last year, too. McGurk, same spot, literally the same play, except this time it's Barak. Okay, so he is not a very good goal scorer when he gets on that right foot. He had the space to bring that to his left, and he really should have. That was atrocious. Oh, yeah, Bancroft, De Benedetto, McGurk, cutting through lines like butter. Lay it off. Oh, baby. Oh, that was something spectacular right there from the boys. <laughs> Cook him up with the sauce. That is so fluid and so pretty and nice hit. Well, let me move Gala up. Wait, you know what? Let's wait for this highlight. Because if they do score on this highlight, I don't think they're going to. Their defense has been timely, but yeah. Oh my God. Like going three seconds an hour, or three seconds an hour, really? Three inches an hour? That is so annoyingly straightforward. And just like Dyson just didn't get over to cover. And that is, I mean, Galazi, that is not a hard shot. See, we, we, if we win this, we're going to the quarterfinal of the League Cup. The farthest we've ever... We've been to the round of 16 now twice. Oh, nice, Bancroft. We kind of love this tournament, apparently. Uh, well, now, since we got to the championship, I should say. We were atrocious in it when we were in League 1 and League 2. But now, in the championship, we've been nothing but great. Tough day in the office? Yes, this should have been a simpler match. But now we have to manage our way to the end. Oh, Louise Menunga, that was so beautiful. And that was a beautiful pass as well. That's a red. I'm sorry. I'm not, though. How? I, he is 51 shades of in on goal here. Well, that's the smartest tackle I've ever seen. If that's only a yellow, I mean, shoot. Volgerson had just bodied that guy. He's shooting. He did, however, successfully waste an entire minute getting ready to hit that shot, so mad respect. Come on, lads! Quarterfinals! So the quarterfinals of the League Cup and things are getting special now for this group of Taunton Town Peacocks. Finances secure. Yeah! Ooh. Quarterfinal draw. Let's see. Middlesbrough, Taunton, Nottingham Forest, Wigan. So there are four championship teams and then Liverpool City, Arsenal, Newcastle. I would prefer a championship team, please. Mr. Shea Given, can you give me? Yeah, totally fine. Yep. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Come on, oh, Nottingham Forest is not championships. So there were only three championship teams, and uh, we're on it. Newcastle, Nottingham Forest. Abs I, I, I just manifest my reality. I don't know what else to tell you. But quarterfinals of the League Cup, and we've got championship Middlesbrough as our opponent. Believe in the miracle. Another big match. We don't have Quakey for these next two matches, so Karu's going to gonna have to play. We'll see how he does with that. Milosevic is cleared to return. The Stadium of Light! Totten away to Sunderland. Love to get three points here. Is it Coach Gerrard? Really? Sunderland did just get relegated from the Prem. They were in the Prem last season and then went down in 20th. But they did make it all the way back. Now they are in playoff positions. This is a tough game. How's it going? Pretty well. Had a good run of wins to start the stream. We're into the quarterfinals of the League Cup, so we're performing well there. Just took one on the chin. Tough 3-2 loss in the rain and stoppage time to, to Crystal Palace in uh, our last league match. So we'd love to get a win away to the sixth team in the league to kind of right that ship. Process-oriented at this point in the season. About getting good performances out of the team. That was such a bad pass. He didn't even recover either. The guy that got to that was Manunga. This pass is so bad. And then Manunga is the guy that comes across and gets to it and throws his leg into it. Yikes. Again, it's like Dyson's allergic to the ball. 
I mean, he has the perfect position to help cover this, and he's running away from it. It's like the match engine's clearly saying that that's like the Dyson should be messing up something. He's on a 6.4. on the rating but the way the engine the, the the graphics engine showing it's just not very good ferdinand forcing i guess that's from our throw-in play amari oh what a ball over bunch it oh all right keon's off at halftime he is on a really bad tear right now uh we got some bad ratings around dyson's off for fagan walcott and we need to go in and say, hey, look, guys, show me something else. That was not good. Two halftime subs is not normally an indicator of great success. Let's run. Forsen. Yes. Amari looking good. Verbancic. Aguru. Yes. Di Benedetto. Verbancic. Come on. No. Don't just freaking shoot it. That's fine. We really are mainly going to progress the ball up the right side. Oh, Oko threading the needle. Carew, Gala, Volgerson. Oh, my goodness. Pass the ball. Oh, Forsen. Whitaker. Is he on? He was. He was onside. That's a tough miss. Sakinia. He's got a decent cross on him. Whitaker making plays up to Carew. Oh, Whitaker, good. Amari Forsen, a lot of chaos. Forsen, can he find the ball? Volgerson keeps it alive. Carew, why? Oko, Penn, please. Why every single part of what I just saw, why? Why is Carew hitting that? Work the ball in the box. You're bombing it from outside. The, you're the guy I want to shoot the least out of every single player that's up there. And their goal was a freaking corner. Oh, we're just getting unlucky right now. Bad little stretch. But the problem is we're getting unlucky against teams that these are six pointers. These are the teams around us in the playoff positions. And we're getting unlucky against them. And I don't like it. We get this ship right now. I'm going to blow out the next team we play. We were just all over them and couldn't do anything with it. Oh, then we have Brentford away. All right. Well, we definitely need to win this game. And then if we can go beat Brentford, that'd be their first loss of the year, likely. Their first loss of the year, and that would be something special for us. Okay, boys, let's uh, let's turn this dominance into let's turn this dominance into wins again. If we win our match in hand, we're in third. I'm assuming one of these two matches is our match in hand. If it's not, the scheduling is kind of crazy. You think it's getting relegated other than Southampton and Bournemouth? Please, Everton. I don't want Everton to go down. I Everton, it is very real possibility that Everton will cease to exist if it gets relegated. It'd be funny if nothing else. Now, I mean, our, our, the lead editor of the channel, Reese, is a huge Everton fan. And I don't think it, I don't think it, look, you can hate a club. I don't think a club disappearing would ever be funny, right? I mean, that, I, I think sometimes the amount of importance that a club or a sports team can have for a fan myself included sometimes with like Virginia basketball can be outsized and almost unhealthy but the impact on so many people of a club disappearing wow that was a penalty okay so a club actually disappearing would not be good and that is uh I mean that's why I'm not really against the government white paper on reg like regulating the prim how are we so bad at penalties dude that was so slow Love these throw-ins from the corner. Well, Gearson got Dyson! No! Way to tie the guy up like three. Oh, baby. Well, that was their only chance of half, but it was not a bad one. Nice, Gala. Oh, what a pass by Antonio Gala! And it's Phil Gearson with his fourth goal of the season. And a giant exhale from the away end. That is so good. Well, Gearson really positioned himself properly. Good pass. Shoot. Oko is reminding us why he still exists as the statue that he is. Nice, McGurk. Oh, that's just really, really pretty. Nice. Oh, yeah, play him. 
Aguru, what was that first touch? Second touch was better. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that, honestly. Boy, we should have, that should have been a lot more comfortable than it was, but we won the game, and that's all that matters in the end. Loving the process. I think we're, we're laying down the XG right now, and I'm very glad that we found that win because that was, I think, our match in hand, and there we are, a point off Crystal Palace, so... Good stuff. And now three days off in Brentford, we should be a little more recovered than we were for Charlton Athletic. Oh, Gearson to Iceland and Milosevic to Serbia. Now that is the single best call up that we've had. Away to the runaway favorite in the league right now, Brentford, who if I am right, they have not lost this year. It would be our honor to hand them their first loss of the season and claw our way back into that top two. Okay. Let's go do it. Away to Brentford. Let's get it done. Brentford got relegated not this past year, but two years ago. They had a terrible year last year, and now they've slapped the pieces together and are really good again. But little old Taunton Town, who you might recognize from the League Cup quarterfinals. Well, we are going to uh, maybe you know, just cause a bit of a surprise. This is the time for Verbancic to show us what he's all about. Not just in little fits and spurts. Oh, that is, that sucks. <laughs> that is a banger. We'll see what we're made of now. Woo! Absolutely cooked that one. A .01 XG screamer for Brentford. Oh, there you go, Koike. Oh, McGurk, what? What? No! Oh, he got hurt. Okay, that kind of explains. I've never, like, I've never seen a guy go down like that. I think McGurk just all-time cooked Nazar Mizrawi. Whap! <sighs> I might have just injured him with how good the move was. Actually just broke his ankles dummying that one through. That would have been nice if he scored that. But of course, we're going to head this into an uncomfortable position instead of going back to the goalkeeper. That should have never been a chance, guys. And there it is. This time it was open, Samuel A. Quakey, oh, wow, that was not far away. Making a lot of silly mistakes right now, guys. I need to take the pressure off of them in this talk. You've been unlucky, yes. Yusuf, you were standing under that ball when it was kicked and you got out of the way to let that guy bring it down with his foot. I didn't even know what to say there. That's a big time save. Well, that's brutal. That is a really tame game. They had a third minute banger and then we really didn't create any highlights in the second half in particular. Uh, we've won a lot of games on this stream and I still feel like we've been very unlucky. They had like one XG and took 17 shots. Bombing from everywhere. It's been nice to win here. But... They're unbeaten and top of the league and absolutely flying, and that's going to just help them fly away from us and everyone, so that's no fun. Oh, come on. We'd won that. Well, I mean, we, we didn't deserve to win that game. A loss, was, uh, a loss was on the harsh side, but Aguru is ice cold, and our next match is Darby County, too, so there's going to be a load of matches that should be easier coming up. Coming up soon. Okay. The takeover might have hit the rocks, apparently. That's no fun. Oh, Wolves, we beat you guys in the League Cup, and now they offer a job interview, and I'm going to say no. We might be joining you in that league next season, brother. I'm very happy where I am. Love Coach Natanton. We have a very competitive championship team we've put together, and we're excited about the prospect to get into the Premier League, and so on and so forth. At home against Darby County, a match that I expect us to win. That is next. Tom Smith is 32 years old. Dang it. We need to get that man into the Premier League before he freaking retires. I had no idea he was that old. Oh, it's a race against time for the mullet bullet. Now, we'll keep him as part of the coaching staff, obviously, if he does retire. If he wants to be a coach, we don't know. Sometimes they just call it a career and leave. Personal message following. Wait. Oh, there it is. It happened. Nick Garner successfully completed a takeover of Taunton Town, replacing Kevin Sturmey. Garner revealed he was delighted by the deal and indicated he wanted to make a difference for the fans at Taunton Stadium. Transfer embargo is lifted. Club vision uh, is... 
Oh, the vision and expectations meeting. Be competitive in the FA Cup. Be competitive in the League Cup. Youth facility improvements completed. And the personal message is that... Uh, oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Welcome to Zealand News. I am your host, Zealand, on the Zealand News Network on the Zealand Channel. Right. A message from Nick Garner in his press conference uh, to Coach Zealand Shannon, whose name being associated with the name of this news network is nothing more than a coincidence. Said, I want to thank you for your patience during what has undoubtedly been a stressful time for everyone involved with the club. Some 2.3 million has been pumped into the club's coffers and a new transfer budget has been calculated. The current board will remain in their roles and will be joined by managing director Christian Fado. That is all, and Totten now have new owners, Nick Garner, the consortium leading honeypot businessman from Wickham or something. So the new transfer balance is the exact same as the old one. But we'll hit continue again and see if that changes. That's a little bit of sugar. He's making an investment in the future. He bought the club for like 20 million. And we're going to try and turn it into a big time club. Obviously, we've already made significant progress in that. Kevin Sturmey owned a semi-pro club in the sixth division that we have absolutely launched up the leagues. And he felt it was time to uh, capitalize on his previous investment and step aside. Well, that's exciting. I'm assuming it didn't, uh, yeah, nothing changed. They just added 2 million into the 2.3 million into the overall balance. So, hey, you got a little uh, training facility improvement for me? Every team from ninth to fourth is on 27 points right now. That's pretty crazy. But yeah, we're gonna call it. I didn't want to go too long today. That was, that was a good run. I mean, had some tough results in the league, but we had a very difficult schedule and we kept the League Cup dream alive and we've got another shot at it playing another championship team and we got to take over. Love you guys. Thank you for being here. So I was a little tired today, but I'm glad we got, you know, good results, particularly at the beginning. And hopefully we'll be able to get a run going once we're playing teams not in the top seven, like every single match. But fist bump, thank you so much for the subs, allowing us to do what we do. Uh, allowing us to afford the illustrious editing team that we have and be able to make great stuff that you guys uh, hopefully enjoy. So I'll see you on Thursday. Bye.